Good evening. I'm Heather Campbell, Director of Education. I want to welcome you tonight to our virtual town hall to share the exciting new plans for our kindergarten to grade 12 consolidated new school in Atacokan. So tonight I want to share with you our agenda for the evening. We'll look at the end goal of the new facility and share with you the, the plans for what it will look like at the end when it's all finished. And we'll also share the construction activities planned for this school year what those activities mean for our students, our staff, and our families. And then we'll look forward to the 2021-22 school year construction activities. Halfway through the presentation, um, around 7.15, 7.20, I'll open up the Q&A section. If you're looking for that, it's an icon with a question mark at the top of your screen, screen. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to enter them and we will look to answer them as they become available. Before we begin, I want to thank our building committee uh, and our partner, the Rainy River District Social Services Administration Board, who is a partner with the daycare and earlier on center, um, certainly for all their work in uh, helping to create this vision of an exciting new school for our students in Atacokan. I'll turn it over now to Travis Engie, our manager of plan operations and maintenance, who will lead you through tonight's uh, presentation. Great, thank you, Heather. So uh, first thing I wanted to cover tonight is uh, who the key players in this uh, project are. Uh, Critchley Hill Architecture is uh, also known as our consultant team. They're responsible for the design and engineering efforts required for the project. We have used this architecture firm on other projects in the past, such as Robert Moore School, Mind Center School, uh, JW Walker Full Day Kindergarten, as well as several other renovation and site plan projects. Finway General Contractors Incorporated is the general contractor for the project. They are based in Thunder Bay and have also completed other projects for the board, such as the new school wing at Donald Young School in Emo, uh, Mind Center School, as well as other smaller renovation and mechanical upgrade projects. The Rainy River District Social Services Administration Board, like Heather said, is a partner with us in this project in that we're building a new uh, child care section onto our school uh, and they will be the operators of the child care and the ch family and child centre when the project is completed. And then of course the owner is uh, of the project is the Rainy River District School Board. Uh, the main points of contact for the construction uh, is Amy Matheson, our lead of capital projects. And then overseeing that uh, and speaking to you today is myself, Travis Sangi, the manager of plant operations and maintenance for the board. So this picture we see here is our end goal. That's where we're trying to get, uh, get to. We expect that this will take a minimum of two years to complete this multi-phase project. Just to give you some orientation on this photo, uh, running along the bottom left hand side of the slide is Mercury Avenue and then the road that goes off to the right here is, is Saturn. Uh, along the road you can see on our site uh, we will have a, our bus, a bus pull off uh, for dropping and picking off our students. Uh, we also next to it have a kiss and ride loop for student drop off and pick up um, during our school days. The top left hand side we have a redesigned parking lot for the child care center uh, for their staff and for their daily uh, drop off and pick up of the children that will attend there. Uh, also some parking up in this parking lot will also be used for our K-12 staff. In the back we still have our outers building that's there currently. Next to it however we're going to be building a garage size maintenance building and then the rest of the back area will still be available for parking uh, for staff and students. Over here we have our playground. It won't look exactly as the picture we have here as this was done as an artist rendition as we're working through the project, but it will be similar. Um, we're going to bring over the play structures uh, from North Star. Uh, the kindergarten area would be right here and there's a lot of new structures or fairly new structures at North Star that would be transplanted there. Um, the other good, uh, structures would also come over and make up our, the rest of our playground out here. Um, there will be a basketball court and we, the beach volleyball that we used to have over in this area would be moved over here eventually. 
So that's the, what the site layout would uh, look like from, from up a bird's point of eye. Um, looking at our floor plan of the end goal, uh, the square at the top here, of course, is our existing Grayson Hall. And then in front of it is the new child care wing, uh, the new addition for the child care facility. So this facility is a 49 place child care designed in consultation with DSAB. It uh, contains, it'll uh, have 24 preschool spaces, 15 toddler spaces and 10 infant spaces. And as well in the child care will be a best start hub, which is also known as a child and family center. Next to that running south is our current uh, seven and eight wing. And now this wing will be re uh, completely renovated to house our new, our new main office would be located here with this being the front entrance. Um, and also on this side would be staff work areas in our staff room. And then across the hall is our first three elementary classrooms. Moving a little further down, we've got our early years classrooms or our kindergarten classrooms. Uh, you can see the uh, this in the in between they're separated because in between them we've had good success with putting our uh, cubbies and our coats in the middle and then they have a direct access to their own fenced in playground. Uh, going down the hall, we have the rest of our elementary classrooms for our program and then we have our spec ed area uh, down here about midway. Uh, coming into the secondary side now, we have a math and physics room uh, and then next to it, uh, uh, a chemistry and biology lab. And at the end, we have more just general secondary program classrooms. And at the very end, contact north in an area for our alt ed. The last section uh, moving to the south is an existing area. So this is our existing shop wing or techn technology area. Um, starting up here is the auto shop. This is where it is currently. That's going to be renovated into a multi-use shop. Next to that is our existing food lab and it will rem it uh, will have a light renovation but will remain very similar to what it is now as it was just renovated uh, five years ago. Next to that is our new small gym with a stage. Um, this area currently, the first half of this new small gym is our caf, the bottom floor is the cafeteria, and then above it is the old uh, contact north space. And then the second half of this space is our existing uh, wood shop. So this whole, so there's going to be a very heavy, oops, heavy renovation in this spot uh, area because we're also going to be removing the roof and, and uh, raising the structure in order to give us more um, uh, space for our racket sports and like badminton and volleyball uh, and things like that. Off the back there's going to be a small uh, addition and that is to give us some storage and to make our stage, our new stage accessible for, for anybody that has mobility needs for accessibility. And things, one thing that we do do now is that our stage won't be just a stage. We're also looking for it to double as a music program space uh, to just make the most of all the spaces within our school. Next to that is the little hallway that leads out into the parking lot and that's existing right beside the wood shop. And then our NRT classroom, these will all be uh, renovated spaces as well, but will remain as our NRT classroom. Um, and then next to that would be the library. And then this long hallway is that hallway that we have right now in the uh, in that in that wing, and you can see on this side of it all the remaining school where we're going to be uh, operating right currently during uh, during our uh, construction process. Uh, this side of the hallway will have to be remediated to, uh, to once we we demolish the rest of the school. So that's the end goal. So. What are things going to look like on site? So the first thing I wanted to show you was the site plan for our construction zones. So the contractor's main offices, washrooms and lunch trailer will be along Saturn Avenue near the outers building. So this yellow area down here and that will be in a fenced in area. Uh, they will leave. They're very aware of how important this is for a pathway for the community for snowmobiles, ATVs and people out walking or uh, so they will make sure that there is space for people to get by. The next construction zone will be beside the outers building and that will be another fenced off area where they'll be constructing the, the new maintenance building and they'll be starting on that right away. 
And then up the third area that they're going to have fenced off is up. So um, this shows the new school wing right now. And you can see that this existing garage and here's the auto shop and beside it is that uh, our existing maintenance building behind that area. They're looking they'll be uh, fencing that off and this will be their main point of access for this seven and eight wing that they're going to be uh, starting renovations on. Um, the doors that lead out of the uh, right beside the auto shop currently will be closed for regular access, but will still be available for use in case of an emergency. Um, they're also working while I have this up. So down here at the end, we've got our uh, two portables that we've brought down uh, from uh, to house our seven and eight program during construction. And out next to here as well, we're working on some uh, temporary parking. Uh, we'll add some gravel and once the ground freezes, it'll be pretty easy to get around on. Um, but what we're trying to do is um, make sure that we do have enough parking for when we, once we get into the springtime construction as well, where there will be more traffic behind the building here uh, just to alleviate some of our parking pressures. So um, periodically there will be uh, vehicle traffic that will need to go through here for deliveries and things like that. Um, and we just want everybody to be aware of that. Uh, and there will also be lots of signage and stuff up as well to pay attention to. So that's what's going to be what, what it'll look like outside right off the bat. So then for inside is another view um, in the kind of interior zones of, of construction here are shown in pink and these are the first spots that they're going to be uh, going after. Uh, like I said, the, for outside there'll be fencing that we already, so the, this area, this courtyard I was talking about, there's that maintenance building I was talking about. This courtyard area will be fenced off and used by them. They'll also have fence around here and one of the first things they'll be doing is uh, building this maintenance area. Um, like I said, the grade seven and eight students, this was their, their wing as well as administration, but the seven and eight program has been moved out to these portables that are just outside the library on the end there. A quick note on the portables as well is that they are new. They were purchased or fairly new. They were purchased new in 2016 um, when we needed some extra classroom space for our Donald Young School construction in Emo. And then once we were done with them, we moved them to our maintenance shop for a little while. Well, they, and then they waited to come down to Atacoke and then we of course moved them there this uh, fall. They are newer style portables, uh, well insulated, large windows. Uh, the, you know, they have newer type of uh, heating and ventilating units with filtration and uh, they have air conditioning. So once uh, once we get back into our warm weather, it'll be nice. they will be comfortable spaces to be in. Um, like I said, the courtyard area will be fenced off uh, because this will be their access to the school. So they won't, the contractors won't need to be in the school to access their construction zone. They'll be able to come through uh, the back. Uh, there's a couple ways in. They can get in through here. That goes down, there's stairs here that go down to the old cafeteria and that can get them into, into this space as well as um, there's, this also gets us into the basement, this little roll up door over here. They may also uh, end up knocking a hole in the wall somewhere uh, because it's a construction zone and, and they just need to get ease of access to, to start their renovations and get materials and, uh, and in and out of the uh, building. Um, next slide, we're going to look at the floor plan. Oh, and the last piece, sorry, I just about missed. Uh, over in the NRT lab as well, in the back, uh, they're going to be building a hoarding wall in there as well so that they can start construction of our new electrical service that will feed the new building. So this is a floor plan of our existing uh, school in the seven and eight wing. Um, so again, this, we're just trying to duplicate the pink zones to give you a better idea of what's going on. Um, so they're, they're going to have, this is where they're starting. Uh, they also are going to be using the small gym and, the, and they'll be taking over the boiler room. The boiler room isn't normally occupied by students anyway. Um, and then ad administration. So if you look, this, is our, this was our main office and we've relocated uh, administration to, to cover the classroom, that room 22 across the hall. Uh, the principal's office still remained and, and a part of the uh, of the office uh, stayed. Uh, they've put a, a different access door into here, but they'll, they'll, our ministry, that's important to know is that if you do uh, make an appointment to come in and visit the school, uh, that this is where you would go to get to the main office. 
Um, there's a wall that's been built. It's a hoarding wall. It's, uh, you know, when you look at it, it's basically an OSB wall from floor to ceiling uh, that, that segregates their construction area from our program area. Uh, across the hall, both washrooms will still be available. I've got a note to say uh, there'll be a small change in the female washroom uh, during the March break, but we'll get to that. But in the meantime, both washrooms are available and there is a, a bottle filling uh, bottle, bottle filler outside that uh, will also be used. The other, th the one, the one hardship of construction, if, if you want to call it that, is that uh, we won't have an indoor path, of course, to Grayson Hall during construction. So for now, uh, students will have to uh, exit through the front of the building, uh, walk around the outside here in order to get, get to Grayson Hall. Then that other part that they're going to start working on right away is in the back of the NRT lab. Um, and the NRT lab is quite a large lab, um, so and we had to consume some of it because this room in the back was an existing electrical room, but we had to give a little bit more space in order to create our uh, new electrical service uh, for the school. The greenhouse, however, will still remain accessible to the lab, so they'll still be able to run their programming in here. So that, that'll kind of be what we're doing until we get to the start of the second semester. So everything else here we've already covered. Uh, you know, the maintenance building will still be under construction. Seven eights will still be in the portables. They'll be, we'll still have that little piece at the back of the NRT and the, this seven eight wing will be under construction. But the new thing will be the auto shop is that in the second semester, the con contractor is gonna take over the auto shop uh, to start uh, renovating that into a multi-use shop. Likely there'll be a little more fencing added out the back door here so that they can have a little lay down area to get their materials uh, there. Um, and But besides that, from inside the school, you won't notice too much. They'll just lock the doors and that shop will be uh, under construction. And then getting us to March break, a few a month or so after the start of the second semester, we have one other little change to note is that that, that female washroom that's by the main office uh, they need to take, um, I'll, go, I'll just click to the next slide, it's down here. Um, but this little highlighted area, before they had access to the complete washroom, they're going to build over March break another hoarding wall that's going to give uh, put those four uh, toilets behind into the construction zone. But they'll still have access for to the rest of the washroom and they'll still have uh, four uh, toilets uh, for use. Um, and that that's just, the reason for that is if, if you if you look, this line here is is a major um, it's a it's a structural line, and basically uh, everything on this side uh, is being kept, and eventually everything on this side would be demolished. It's just part just one of the things we had to do to get everything into their construction zone. And that will take us through till spring, likely April, uh, once the ground fall uh, thaws. Um, there'll be a, this will be another, this will be our next large, real large change. Um, so once the ground fall, thaws, we will be, they'll start construction of these new wings and, uh, you know, doing excavations and uh, getting foundations going. So the, the uh, construction fencing that was just in the courtyard would be moved somewhere over here, uh, which will cut off some of our back parking lot uh, because they have a large building to build. Uh, by then, one of the constraints is that we do need that maintenance building completed, so it's got to be done uh, and it should be by then without too much difficulty uh, because the existing maintenance building that was here is going to, it goes right over top of that. And then the other part of the, the new construction that they'll start is in the front of Grayson Hall. Um, uh, they, they'll start construction of that child care area. So that as well will change things a bit here out front for how much they'll have to create a construction zone around that. And that will likely eat up some of the parking over by those tennis courts and by the entrance to Grayson Hall. Um, that's one of the reasons why over here we'll have some uh, temporary parking areas um, for us to use to alleviate some of the pressures by consuming this and a little bit of the back here. Um, and but there will still be some parking in the back here available um, and likely we'll be reserving some of these spots out front here that are remaining uh, for uh, visitors that do want to uh, need to come into the school. So that's 
pretty much what takes us through to the end of this school year, because then uh, that'll be once they start construction of the new buildings, that'll take us into the summer. Um, one question that's come up, uh, we've been asked a few times, is construction oversight. Um, how do we ensure that we get a good product out of our general contractor by the end of the project? And the key to this is our contract and specifically our construction documents. So our project is very well defined by an experienced architect and th that has created a package of 215 drawings. That's how many drawings go together to, to define what this renovation and construction effort will be. And then to support those drawings, we have a 640 page specification booklet that also uh, adds to that. Um, so the, co the contractor uses those documents to determine how they'll make their workflow uh, and, it, and it details what kind of doors and boilers and uh, everything that they have to buy. Uh, it details what, what is acceptable. So then also before materials are actually purchased, there's a shop drawing process where they'll uh, get shop drawings from their suppliers and submit them to our consultant team. And then they will review it just to ensure that it does indeed meet the specifications. If something isn't clear or not understood, there's also a process defined in our contract documents uh, to sort that out or deal with any disputes. So uh, through this process, they, they like, for example, they just can't go and buy any door. It, we have very detailed instructions on exactly what type of door, what kind of ratings it must have, um, you know, the thickness of even the thickness of the metal. Um, and, and those details are, are very well uh, defined in, in all the, these documents. And all of those go together with the contract for construction to make up our, our package, our contract package that we all have to uh, adhere to. As well, the designers will be on site. We have uh, built into our contract with them 72 site visits to monitor the progress of construction and they will also be looking for any errors on site or deficiencies just to make sure everything is being done properly. As well, our RDSB staff, so Amy and myself, will also be on site to monitor progress. Uh, and we also have principals and other staff members there uh, just to ensure that everything's going OK and that we are indeed able to run our program and there isn't any issues. And we all will all work together to help problem solve any issues. There are always bumps in the road during construction. And, um, and like I said, the contract has processes in place to, revo to resolve disputes, and we are prepared and poised to tackle any challenges that may occur. We've worked with Finway several times in the past and do have a good working relationship with them. And it's always key in any large project like this, no matter what it is, that everybody works together and, and has patience and flexibility as we move through the various stages of construction. In the past eight years, um, we, we have successfully completed about $19 million of renovations, additions and site improvements at our various facilities. All of these elements are included in this project as well. So we're not really doing anything new. We're just doing a very large number of these things. So one thing I wanted to note as far as schedule go goes is that it is one thing that we don't have a lot of control over. Um, unexpected issues do come up when you're renovating an old building. And these can add, add to uh, costs and it can also add to the time that it takes. Like I said, it'll take a minimum of two years if everything goes perfectly, but it will likely take more. Uh, people always ask why there isn't delay penalties uh, in, built into our contract so that when the, the schedule is extended, uh, the contractor has to pay a penalty. And quite simply, we've looked at that, but what these clauses have an effect of doing as well is increasing the price right off the get go. And our experience is that uh, we, we uh, often barely have enough funding to get these projects to go as they are. So at trying to add in things like that uh, just isn't uh, doable. Uh, please know though that the, the, the contractor is always motivated, however, to get this done as soon as possible. It is a fixed price contract and the longer the schedule, the longer they are on their staff are on site and their payroll is on site, uh, it costs them more to do the job. So they are um, uh, wanting to get the job done and, and move on as well. So communication, um, the purpose of this town hall, like we said, is to give information on our construction activities until the end of this school year. 
Uh, construction, especially when it comes, part of them are renovations. They're always fluid and there may be times that we need to change from our current plan. As things change, we will send letters home and notify parents and guardians of changes. There will also be lots of signage around and posted to keep building occupants aware of our construction zones and where we can and can't be. In addition, we also publish a capital newsletter from time to time um, and we and before we get into the, the next school year, because it will certainly look different than this school year does, we'll have another town hall uh, ver and probably a virtual session and, and do the same type of communication we're doing now uh, to bring you up to date on where we are and what things will look like. So looking ahead to that 2021-22 school year, um, one thing we were looking at is that the, the multi-use technology lab will be completed so that then we can go and hand over that gym, those gym areas that's the new where the new small gym is going to go. So that will need to be completed. And we'll start using that for our programming. And then also on our plate, there's a lot more things to do, such as the renovation, like I said, the renovation of the cafeteria area and the wood shop area into our second gym. Uh, we need to complete those new built those new additions that we started, the new school wing and the child care. Also, renovation of the library and the natural resources technology areas. Uh, Grayson, renovation of Grayson Hall, it is also getting a renovation. And demolition of our unused school sections. And like I said, so that, that plan for that school year is to be determined and we'll be communicating that to you at a, form, uh, at a future date. And just to bring it a full circle back to this is what our end goal is. I'd like to thank you for your time today and listening to this presentation. Um, and I'm going to turn it back over to Heather and we will look at uh, for to answer any questions you may have. Thanks, Thanks Travis. Travis. So for people who would like to ask a question, you can simply go to the icon with the question mark, uh, the Q&A, and certainly that can um, that will open up a chat for you. And if you want to remain anonymous, you're welcome to simply just write in a, a question. And as we receive them, uh, I'll read them. And Travis or I or someone else can answer them and we'll publish them for you for you to read as well. So I'll just give a few a minute or so for uh, some questions to be entered. So we'll start with our first uh, question and it is where can we find this presentation if others want to watch this at a later time? And um, Travis, I think we're going to put this on our website, right? Yes, we can do that and um, uh, yes, we can certainly do that. We, we'll have, a, under, we have a department uh, capital area of the, the website and we'll likely put it there. So if others who couldn't uh, be here tonight, uh, can certainly watch this presentation uh, at a later time. We have another question. What sort of changes are planned for Grayson Hall? Um, most of the changes in Grayson Hall will be to the atrium section of it. Uh, right now, the ramp that's currently in there that's meant for wheelchairs is too steep to meet today's building code. So that stair area it will be uh, kind of reconfigured uh, so that we have uh, a more accessible uh, ramp to get up to the floor level that meets into the seven and eight, uh, the current the current floor level of the seven and eight section. Um, the rest of, the rest of it would be a, a light renovation. Uh, the, the gym needs a new roof. Uh, we're looking at doing that. Outside um, where those berms are up against the wall right now, we're going to cut those down, first of all, because we have to build a childcare there. And also we'll uh, put new siding to freshen up the, uh, the, the the Grayson Hall. But inside the wood floor is in great shape. We're going to we're going to keep that asset and, uh, you know, it, the rest will be a light renovation. OK, and the next question is what buildings has the contractor worked on previously? So Finway did Mind Center School. 
uh, that complete job and they also did the new school portion of Donald Young School. They've also, they did some work in Fort Francis High School as well. Um, they did a mechanical retrofit and did some interior, just minor interior renovations for us there. Uh, back when Jade, no, that wasn't them. Um, and I think that's really the bulk of the large projects that they've done. Another question with respect to Finway is, has the contractor met previous timelines? Uh, yeah, with Donald Young School, uh, we had, we, we, <laughs> We don't demolished the old school before we had the new, like at the beginning of the summer. So that new school had to be done for the start of the school year and they did it. We, we, we got everybody in there and got that place operating. Um, Mind Center was, I think it was a month behind. They were supposed to open in September, but it was open in October, but that wasn't too much of a hardship because I think they had the old school there still. Um, oh, and um, what else? And then, uh, of course, the, the interior renovations at Fort Francis High School, especially when it came to the boiler plant, that had to be all done before winter hit so that we weren't cold because we tore out all the old boilers and they were able to get all that done as well. Thanks, Travis. Uh, next question is what safety measures are in place to protect staff and students? So that, that's the hoarding, In, interior wise, the, the, the main thing you'll see there is the hoarding wall so that it's basically physically, you, you can't just wander into a construction zone. So uh, th that's inside, outside they'll have uh, fencing put up uh, so that they're always um, uh, contained within a fenced off area for, for construction, that's pretty standard. Um, we're making efforts so that um, it's if they need to come into our schools, they have to pass our screening for COVID uh, and they have to check in at the office in order to uh, to if they do need to come to the school for anything. But we're they're as motivated as we are to to minimize that. Um, and once they get going, uh, they'll they don't won't have a lot of reasons to enter directly into the school. They'll, they'll be in, inside their construction areas uh, doing their work. Um, the one thing, uh, there'll be signage up as well. They've already said they'll be putting lots of signage up. Um, and uh, and then, like I said, one of the reasons for tonight, we just want to make everybody aware that there will be some extra pickups and things like that that, that are necessary uh, to get to the construction zones uh, for bringing materials and contractors and things like that. And so uh, that, it's one thing we want everybody to be aware of. And that's one of the reasons why we're also adding that additional parking is to try and alleviate some of that congestion at the back of the school. I've got two questions, Travis, and they're both to do with the daycare. So I'll read them both and then I'll publish them. Why was the daycare placed by Grayson Hall? And then the comment was kids at current daycare take naps between 1 to 3 p.m. Has anyone considered the noise from Grayson Hall? Okay, the first the first question was um, it was placed by Grayson Hall. Be, the, originally, actually, they was looking at putting it more near the front entrance. However, that would have delayed the, we couldn't have worked built that until the very end of the project because of that boiler room. So we looked at alternative sites and went up by Grayson Hall. Um, the architect has considered. Uh, the gym being there and has assured us that uh, he'll have uh, soundproofing it within uh, those walls that uh, that will minimize any effect of noise traveling through there. Great, thanks Travis. Uh, the next question is, will there still be the ability to host the entertainment series at the high school? It, perhaps not during construction, but uh, certainly when we're done our construction, the small gym will have a stage and uh, we still will be doing community use in the future. So um, the, the small gym stage is being replaced with the, the new gym that we're building up in the technology area. Uh, we have another question. What will happen with the weight room? I will remain as is. Okay, we don't have any other questions, so I'll just wait to see if we have any further questions from our audience.
We have another one. How does a music room work on a stage? It works in that we have um, a divider at the front of the stage that is uh, not just a curtain, it's it's like a, move, a movable partition, an, ac an acoustic movable partition. So when, when we're just doing a regular daily programming and you might have somebody using the gym, you can move this partition across so that balls won't come through. And the stage is quite large. It is uh, over a thousand square feet, if I remember right, uh, which is uh, quite a bit of room to uh, set up for, for a music program. And then we also have storage at the back uh, for instruments so that when they're done, uh, they can put them away and, and then we can use it again as a stage. We're always Wait, looking for ways to use our spaces as efficiently as possible. Sorry, Heather. No, that's okay. Uh, it's another question related to that one. Will the small gym and music space be able to be used at the same time? Again, concerns of ex excess noise from students in the gym. Uh, yes, uh, Robert Moore School has a has a stage like that. Um, it, and yes, you can run your music program and and you can run your, your gym program. It isn't as soundproof as let's say that wall between the child care and Grayson Hall would be. So if there's balls, like if they're playing uh, basketball in the music side, I'm sure you would hear some some basketballs. But um, also when instruments are, are playing, they would probably hear those in the gym side, but they're too noisy uh, program type of uh, uh, efforts. So uh, we, we accept that and, uh, and just having that convenience of taking a space that would normally not be fully utilized and getting some more use out of it really helps with the uh, efficiency of our school. We have another question. Will there be enough gym space for students from grades one to 12? Yes, I, I, I believe so. Like, yes. And we're, we're able to separate right now, right? The um, Grayson into sections too, right? Yeah, Greg Grayson also has a, a curtain divider. Um, and uh, and then of course the small gym, uh, you, you basically have three spaces for running running a gym program. Great, thanks Travis. Will there be enough storage? There's never enough storage. <laughs> it, I, that's exactly what I was gonna say. There's never enough storage. However, uh, you know, in our millwork suites, in our elementary, I know for sure, um, and even in our secondary uh, for, for our teachers, one thing about having a school that, that's smaller and more efficient is that we don't get all this space to spread out in. Um, and we, we are doing our best with our millwork and our, our uh, architect is very experienced in millwork suites uh, to, to make sure that we have lots of um, storage for people to store their, their, uh, their resources. And, um, and so we'll, we'll have done our best, but my experience as well in any school is that there's never enough storage. Next question is, will the shop area have separate auto and woodworking areas? Uh, no, not so much separate. However, there will be some areas that are kind of like the welding area will always be a welding area, but it'll be convertible. So um, they spent quite a lot of time on that and visited some other multi-use shops. Uh, so we're excited to see how, how uh, this turns out and that uh, they will run some sort of mechanical program and then like a woodworking program, uh, but, but probably not in the same semester. They'll run one type one semester and then, and then convert the shop and then run the other type the next semester. Thanks, Travis. Here's an interesting question. How are the two schools together but separate? I think they mean the elementary and the secondary. Right, so that, that's kind of, that's in the, the floor plan uh, where you'll notice that near the main office when I went through the floor plan, um, and actually I can kind of skip back to that. Just let me, uh, let me get to my beginning. Sorry if it gives you a headache. All right. So, so like I said, starting from here and around the corner, this little and the kindergartens here, this block here uh, is really our elementary program, uh, it, close to the main office uh, and our main entrance. And then at the back here is more of our secondary spaces, our our math and physics and science and general secondary classrooms, and then 
and then down here in our multi-use shop and in, in food lab. Now, the, things like the food lab, you you could uh, run. Uh, some of these spaces would be used probably for both programs, but but kind of the core spaces are separated, like right here into elementary and secondary. And certainly, I mean, programming occurs at different times. And like we said in the accommodation review, um, many of the students are related, whether they're elementary and secondary, they could be siblings or cousins, neighbors, babysitters. Um, so having high school students with younger elementary level students isn't uh, necessarily something to be afraid of. It could be actually very supportive. And uh, from my experience, I often see the, the high school students being role models, especially when they know that they're around younger children. The next question is, where will the high school students eat lunch? So it, the long hallway here, we won't have a designated, like there's two spaces. One could be the gym. They could turn this into a space for, for some food. Um, also in the food lab, if it wasn't being used for a program at the time, there is a large space in front and there's kind of a serving area in there where they could serve. Uh, but we also found that in like at our at our other high schools that um, especially secondary likes to have uh, lunch kind of in their own little group sometimes at different tables and we can see that this hallway would be uh, a place because this will be there will be a lot of natural light a lot of windows here uh, looking out this way where we'd have cafe style tables um, for people to do homework or ha eat their lunch there um, but there's a number of options in how it actually ends up uh, you know schools are living breathing things it seems and how, how it actually ends up coming to be uh, is really yet to be seen but there is several options built into this floor plan. Another question what will the school be called when is that decided? That's a good question right now it's called the Atacokan K-12 school um, I think there's a procedure on naming schools uh, there's there's a policy on it and I'm just pulling it up right now. Um, it's under facilities and it's to do with school naming and sorry I just have to make sure I grab the right one. Um, and of course I can't find it right now but there is one and we will oh naming is 6.51 naming or renaming a school or part of a school and there's a process that we will have to follow prior to the school being officially opened to um, you know form a, a committee and look at uh, you know ideas for the name of the school we have done that for other schools and certainly I give an example of Robert Moore it was the combination of uh, Huffman School and Robert Moore School and it was ultimately decided to keep Robert Moore School as the name uh, with the new Mind Center School we did we there was a suggestion to explore that one and they just wanted to keep it as mind center and we'll you know have the same process for this um, this building as well and people will be welcome to provide suggestions and that will take place as I said more closely to the opening of the school we have another question will there be enough parking when there are events at Grayson how will public access Grayson when school or daycare are in session um yeah, the, I'm trying to remember how many spaces were in that north bar. We can look at the picture. The, pi the picture is fairly accurate, but wouldn't I'd rather look at a drawing. But um, you, you, there's probably 30 spaces up there for the Grayson Hall. Um, uh, the, the, the street could be utilized, I think, um, and people could, if it's after hours, could park along the perimeter of the Kiss and Ride Loop. Um, we, we were one of the constraints with this project was kind of the existing site and needing the gym to be there and and uh, and parts of the school were where they were. So we've done our best to try and accommodate that. And I, I think, you know, in going to events at Atacokan High School, certainly the graduation is always very well attended um, there. I mean, we're, it looks like similar or even maybe a bit more parking in some ways. I know people do park along the street because there's never enough parking. Um, so just, to, you know, that's an option there. And then of course, um, how will they access uh, during when the school's in session and the daycare is in session for any events that are held at Grayson Hall? That was another question, Travis. Yeah, um, 
I, I imagine like this will still be an entrance into Grayson Hall. Um, the the, the uh, potentially the main entrance could be used as well if there's a uh, you know if there's a coach from bringing a team from out of town they might get dropped off here and work their way in. Um, you know the back is still an option if uh, if if we're expecting them and we needed uh, to use this uh, to to meet them and let them through. Uh, like again, I, the the actual day to day detailed operation of the school is kind of yet to be seen. Um, and those are things that uh, I'm sure that they'll figure out uh, what works for them best as we start to learn our, how to use our new building. The next question is, what's the total cost for this project? Uh, the total amount of funding we have. OK, so the contractor, the, the contractor's cost for this is uh, just uh, just over twenty six million dollars. That's what our contract is worth. And then once you add in all the consultant fees and I and I have contingency monies. Uh, the, the grand total from the project is just over thirty million dollars. I don't have any further questions. Well, we can wait just a, a little bit to see if anyone has any further questions to pose. And these drawings, Travis, uh, they're posted on our website as well. The, the, the 200, those construction drawings? No, the ones you have on the slideshow, like the end goal one, for instance. Uh, we, we can post it with this presentation. I, they have been used previously uh, on other publications, such as the uh, Capital Newsletter, uh, but I, I'd have to look to know specifically if they're there right now. But we'll get this presentation up for everyone. So I don't see any further questions, no new questions being posed. Um, so I'm certain that uh, everyone's had a chance to pose them and uh, I'm certain if there are questions, they can certainly uh, email you or Amy or myself or ask a, a principal uh, to forward a question and certainly we will do our best to answer. Um, there is a comment though, well-organized session, thank you. And uh, thank you those who did take some time out uh, of their evenings right before uh, the winter break to see this presentation. Again, it'll be posted on our website for those who were unable to make it. And like I said earlier, if you do have a question that wasn't posed and answered tonight, we welcome them. And as Travis said, we will be uh, updating you as we progress through the construction. So on, uh, on behalf of everyone who could be here tonight, Travis, uh, thank you for your work in presenting. Uh, you did a great job. Thanks everyone. And thanks to Amy too for all her efforts this week to get helping out at a coconut high transform. So. And also I want to commend our administrators for all their their work at at a coconut high in uh, helping us uh, live through construction. Like I always said, it's like a, a kitchen and you will be doing your dishes in the bathtub for a while until we have a brand new kitchen and then we'll be all very happy. In the meantime, everyone, I wish you a very uh, safe and healthy and happy um, winter break. Take care. Have a good evening.